Today we are going to talk about Stage Manager for the iPad, specifically for the new iPadOS 17. Almost a month ago I did a review of this software on my iPad Pro and first let me say thanks to many of you that are back here because you subscribed and perhaps commented. That video blew up to over 300,000 views which is a huge climb from anything that I've ever done before and really got this channel rolling for the first time. So thank you so much for the support. But what I noticed in the comments as the number one theme was thoughts or questions on Stage Manager and they were all across the board. Some people absolutely hated it before in iPadOS 16 and continue to dislike the experience. For others, it was the number one feature they are excited to see enhanced and were eager to use it in their everyday lives. I'd say the majority, however, were somewhere in the middle. You had questions. You wanted to know what device this would be supported on. You wanted to know how to use it or even why it should be something that you should turn on and try. In this video, we are going to cover all of that and more. I'm not going to compare Stage Manager in today's OS compared to iPadOS 16 as I already covered much of that in my last video, but make sure to watch that one from a few weeks back if you want a total breakdown of all things iPadOS 17 and what it has to offer. Let's dig in. To enable Stage Manager, pull down on the top right corner of your screen to enter Control Center and click the Stage Manager icon. This will now enable you to have multiple stages on the left side of the screen which makes it incredibly easy for multitasking and jumping in between apps. Stay tuned to later in the video where I will go into even more detail of how you can customize this experience. Before I go any further, let me say a couple caveats before we resume right back into the features. As many of you had asked, according to the Apple website, you can now use Stage Manager for the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, 3rd gen and later, iPad Pro 11 inch, 1st gen and later, and the iPad Air 5th generation. Second, just because your iPad has Stage Manager doesn't mean your specific iPad has all the functionality the OS has to offer, which brings me to my first point in this guide as we continue on. Let's talk external monitor support. For probably most of us right now, if we plug in an external monitor, we will be able to mirror our iPad screen on a second display, giving us a bigger screen size to work with whether typing up a document or working on some photo editing. However, if you are running a compatible iPad as I previously mentioned, but you do not have an M-series chip, an M1 or M2 iPad, which are Apple's latest and greatest speed demons, your external display support is going to be very limited. Myself, for example, I have an 11-inch iPad Pro second generation. This model would have come out in early 2020, so a few years old, but I'm telling you, this device is solid. It is fast, does everything I throw at it. However, if I were to plug in my external Apple Studio display via a Thunderbolt cable, the best I would be able to do is mirror the display. I'll have black bars along the side and the experience is limited. Sure, I can pair an external mouse and keyboard like my Apple keyboard and my Logitech MX Master 3, but I'm just seeing a cloned experience on both screens. Is the bigger screen real estate great? Sure, but I'm also not going to go to my way to unplug my Mac Studio to do something, and let's be honest, on a lesser device. If you have an M1 or M2 series chip, or M3 or M4 as there's bound to be in the future, you are able to extend your iPad screen, not just mirror it. This means with Stage Manager, you could have four unique windows on each screen and drag and drop different items between the two. You would also be able to take advantage of the full resolution of that external screen, and there would be no more black bars taking up the edge as long as you also have a mouse and keyboard paired with it. Unfortunately, I'm not at a point where Apple is sending me free Apple gear to review, but if you want the most comprehensive reviews possible and like the details you're hearing so far, feel free to hit subscribe and help us both out. Okay, onward. There are certainly going to be people that master Stage Manager and hack it to their exact workflows. Obviously, the biggest benefit of Stage Manager is that you can see multiple things on your screen at once, and now with iPadOS 17, you have much more freedom to size and move them as you please. Still mad that Instagram doesn't have an iPad app and that it looks like crud when it's full screen with completely wasted real estate? Well then, just make it skinny as if it were the dimensions intended for an iPhone. Now you have more of the screen left to open a second, third, or fourth app to show simultaneously. And that brings me to my next point. Currently, four windows is the limit for each stage. My gut is the reason for this limit is because Apple doesn't want a user to be overburdened with too many windows at once. I'm guessing, however, that the hardware is more than capable of handling more. Was this a good decision? I'm not totally sure yet. I, for one, appreciate all the flexibility possible. But at the same time, in all honesty, I also don't see myself adding five or more windows to a single stage at once. 
If you have an M-series iPad, you would be able to extend your display and have an additional four apps open and a second screen for a total of eight. Do you really need more, especially if you can easily switch among multiple stages? I guess I will let you be the judge of that. Let's spend a minute with the basics. To move a window within a stage, it is as easy as tapping and holding the top bar of an app and moving it to pretty much anywhere on the screen. You can fling them any corner and make way for another app to sit amongst the apps you already have open. Resizing the apps is also easy with tapping and moving the corner handles on each window. While apps will sort of snap to some default dimensions to properly display, you are pretty much able to make your windows as tall or wide as you would like. If, for example, you want to create four even rectangles at each quadrant of your screen, you can do that. I should note that if you have an external mouse connected, you will have even more flexibility with your apps. Moving windows will still be the same by clicking and dragging at the top of the app, but for resizing, you can move your mouse to any edge or corner of a window and you'll get a cursor that allows you to click and drag for resizing, which is even more convenient than with the touch screen only. So now let's dive into the stages a little bit more. Currently, you have a total of five stages, four along the left side of the screen and then the active stage you have open. And again, if you have an extended display, you can double that. Jumping between stages is as easy as clicking the mini stages on the left. You will be able to help identify your stages with the small app icons. Once you click a stage, the current stage you have in view will take the place of the stage you are bringing up on your screen. To add an app to your current stage, there are a few ways you can do that. You could drag an app, let's say, from your dock, but that is a little bit of a slower process, and if I were you, I would just hold the top bar of a current app on your screen and then click an app on your dock and it will instantly come to your stage. If you have a keyboard attached, hold the shift button and you can tap an app with your finger or click one with your mouse to also add it quickly to your stage. So you may be saying, Brandon, this is a lot of work. What is the point? And I'd say stage manager isn't for everybody, but there are some definite use cases. For example, I could see a person wanting different stages for work or personal, or maybe they are working on a project and they want their to-do apps in one stage, their notes and research, websites on another stage, and maybe finally a photo or video editing app on another stage. This way, a user could quickly toggle between their different stages in order to accomplish the work they need to do. The most common thing I see happening is for multitasking on a single screen. For example, maybe you are researching how to attract bees to your garden. On one side of the screen, you could have Safari open as you browse different landscaping and nature-oriented forums and websites, and then on the second half of your screen, you could have the Notes app open. This makes it super easy to type up your notes or even copy and paste links, photos, or other assets to build up your knowledge base. Or perhaps you want to have reminders open to create a to-do list while you plan your vacation using an app on the other side. Or maybe you are watching a video on one area of your screen while you browse Amazon. The world is sort of your oyster and you get to pick and choose how you customize this process. Without Stage Manager, multitasking gets a little more complex, but not impossible. For example, let's go back to the example of taking notes on how to attract more bees to your garden. To do this, I would be in Safari in full screen, find the info I want to place in the notes, do my copy, pull up from the bottom of the screen, find notes, which is hopefully in my recent apps, click it and paste from there. This is actually not a bad system and I do it all the time. However, when you are really grinding fast on a lot of the same needs, such as doing research or making lists, Stage Manager makes it that much more efficient to get your work done. A handy tip for managing Stage Manager windows is clicking the three dots at the top of the window. There you can make apps go full screen, you can minimize them all together, or you can even add an additional window as yet another way to build your different stages. If you're like me and want a little bit more space for your apps, you can turn off the strip of recent stages on the left side of your screen by going back into the control center and holding the stage manager icon and then unchecking the check mark. Note, you can also choose to hide the dock as well if you would like. Once back to your normal screen, either the recent stages or dock can be brought back by swiping from that side of the screen. For me, whether on a Mac or the iPad, I choose to have the dock present as it is the fastest way for me to jump between apps that I frequently use. And that is probably the crash course for beginner level usage of Stage Manager. Can you take it to the next level and geek out on speedy keyboard shortcuts to really optimize your workflow? Absolutely, and I encourage you to play around to see if Stage Manager is something that would enhance your experience. Though what I'm finding out with many people I know is shortcut and gesture fatigue is happening. If you're an Apple user and own an Apple TV, Apple Watch, EarPods, uh, iPhone, iPad, you know, think about it. You have all these shortcuts and gestures on all these devices and to do them all well takes a bit of brain power and practice if you're going to go beyond just the basics. So the question at the end of the day is, are you going to use Stage Manager? Again, try it out and practice. 
From there, you'll be able to make the call. For me, I will continue having it off by default, and here is why. First, there still seems to be a few bugs. For example, I did have a couple instances while adding an app to a stage with my keyboard, and for whatever reason, I got the black screen with a spinner and the entire iPad had to restart on me. Another time, I had it connected to an extra display and a pop-up appeared for me to rate an app. However, there was no way I could interact by touch or with my mouse on the second display to close it. I've also noticed random behaviors. For example, if I accidentally swipe on a stage on the left rail, I don't always know what is coming and going or if a recently used app magically has taken its place. Because some windows are larger, they will hide the left rail or dock even if I don't want them to. Or an app within a stage will be full screen and completely change the experience on me from what I was expecting. Yes, all of this is preventable if you try. Another thing that is annoying is apps that use Face ID to open. If let's say you have Mint or Day One for journaling or some app that uses Face to authenticate in, if you move to a stage where that app is in the background, it will have to pause to authenticate your face even though you maybe can't see it. And trust me, I get it. There could be plenty seen by prying eyes along the edges or to the side of your active window if you didn't have this process occur. But it is a change from Mac OS where windows can freely rest on each other and you don't have to make the device trust itself again. For me, I want my privacy, but I want easy flow between stages as well. And odd behaviors aside, I just don't like seeing smaller apps on an already smaller screen. If I open YouTube, for example, to scroll videos to watch, I only see videos too wide versus three wide on full screen. Any app is gonna be smaller and harder to read and my aging eyes are not liking going backwards. However, there's always a time and a need to do true multitasking and speed things up. When those moments arrive and I need to work between maybe two or three apps max, I will appreciate turning Stage Manager back on to speed things up. In the meantime, I will be cheering Apple on from the sidelines as they continue to evolve multitasking capabilities for the iPad into the future, and who knows, maybe it will be a day where I can't live without it. Hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned some helpful tricks with Stage Manager, and we'll catch you on the next one.